<laughs> so we're going to do um, we're going to do a, a website, uh, and we're going to create a prototype for a website um, about LCC CISS programs. And we're going to assume that we've already done the work as far as determining the goals and determining the requirements. And this is what our structure chart looks like. I know, I'm finishing writing it. All right, so this is what our structure chart looks like. So we're going to have a total of six pages. We have a home page, and we're going to have a page about each of the disciplines. Um, web development, mobile development, software development, networking. We're also going to have a contact page. Um, our basic wireframe is going to be the same for everything. <coughs> we have our page. We're going to have our header at the top. We're going to have our navigation. We're going to have our content area. And then we're going to have a footer. So our basic looks like this. Now, a couple of uh, variations. We know that all of our pages about particular programs are going to look like this. where we're going to have associate degrees university partners certificates and then the footer so it's going to look like this so we basically have one wireframe plus a couple pages that are going to have a little bit extra stuff all right, so it's not two totally distinct wireframes because they're very similar, but the wireframes for these pages, these four pages, are going to have additional sections. So what we're going to do over the course of the next few days is develop a prototype for this. So we're actually going to develop several prototypes. And it's good to develop several prototypes simply from the perspective of you can then show them to the stakeholders and get their feedback. By stakeholders, I mean anyone that has a stake in the project. So it might be the dean of engineering, uh, business and IT. All right, They are the person that the CISS program is, falls under. It might be CISS professors. Maybe we've gotten a focus group of CISS students uh, and uh, other developers that might be working on this. So we're going to start by um, creating a prototype for this. And our prototype is going to do, the process is going to look like this. Given that these two wireframes look very similar, we're going to develop our home page first. All right? With, uh, <coughs> given <coughs> the wireframe that we defined. Once we like that, we are going to develop one of our content pages, our content pages for, let's say, web development or mobile development. All right, once we like that, we'll, we might clone that and develop a second one. And that'll give us our three pages. Or maybe we'll do the home page, the, uh, one of the uh, specific discipline pages, and then a contact page. So we're going to develop three pages. The prototype doesn't need to include a, a, a page of everything. You can uh, pick and choose the pages that you're going to do uh, for the prototype. For example, in, in our case, these four pages are going to be laid out the same. They're going to have the same sort of content. So there's really no need to make a prototype for each of them. We might instead just make a prototype for one. But the home page is different. The web development page and these groups of pages are different. And the contacts pages uh, page will be different. So maybe we'll develop you know, those three. So once we have gotten our page the way we like it, we're going to clone that page. And we're going to make copies of it. And we're going to then fill in the specific content areas. So. Let's start out by working on our first prototype. And we're going to do this by first developing the content, which is in HTML 
HTML. Then we're going to style it. And we're going to make sure that our common content looks correct. Because once we start duplicating the web pages, if we decide we want something extra on the header, we have to go back and make a change to all those web pages. Whereas with the CSS, if we decide if we want to make a change, there's only one place to make those changes because we're going to have one CSS file. So I'm going to put in, and I'm going to make a template first, something that I can go and clone for the rest of the pages. One thing to pay close attention to is, I've noticed in grading, is pay attention to the proper nesting and pay attention to the tags being in the right place. Uh, anything that appears on the screen should be in the body tag, not the head tag. The head tag, the only thing that appears on the screen from the head tag is the title, which appears up here. But if it's a link, a paragraph, anything like that, it should be in the body section. The link for the style sheet is in the head section, but remember, that's not content that appears on the page. Oops, I forgot to put the head in. Make sure you close tags. You know, pay close attention. I've been kind of lenient on that because we've just been starting off, but we're, actually we haven't just been starting off, we're about halfway through the semester, so by now you should have that stuff down fairly well. So, you've been warned. What I did is just, uh, I make a template. That's fine, you could have, for example, this chunk of code sitting out there and just, just clone it every time, just to make sure you don't forget any of the main tags. All right, so I'm going to make the header, and the header I'm going to say H1. CISS programs. at LCCC. Navigations are typically done as unordered lists because really what is a navigation? Well, navigation is a list of links that you can click on. And we want to use the best, the most appropriate tag for our content. So that navigation, because navigation is a list, we're going to use the list tags. It's unordered because we can change the order. You know, there's no, there's no intrinsic reason why web development should be before mobile development or vice versa. I'm going to have the link to every page on every page, which means that every, a page will even have a link back to itself, which is okay. Um, sometimes students are like confused, like why would you do that? Well, that's just to ensure consistency. You don't want links appearing and disappearing. So I'm going to put a link to every page, uh, even the even of the page you're actually on. My my home page I'm going to call index.html, which is a typical name typical name for your default or home page. And then I'm going to have my other pages. Web. Mobile. Software. Network and contacts. Web development. 
mobile development. Software development networks and contacts. All right. Then going to have at least one section on the page. So I'll put a section tag here. And this is going to be the code which is distinct to each page. So I'm just going to put something here that says distinct distinct to each page change this area. Just a message to myself that here is sort of the blank that's going to get filled in on each page. Then finally we're going to have a footer that contains maybe copyright information I'm putting in white space that will make it more readable. That's another thing you ought to pay attention to. It's really hard grading some things when uh, things aren't indented, there's no ending tags, and so on. So this, in a nutshell, is sort of the content um, for the wireframe, simply put. I have on here the code that's going to be common on each page. So let's save this, and I'm going to call it template. Make it an HTML file called template. And I'm going to clone this guy once I have it down. To make the other pages. So if we look at this, we have... The content, but no presentation. All right? That is, again, the content of the page. Now, I should look at this and I should say, is there anything I want to appear on every single page? Yeah, maybe a little more information in the header. Maybe a brief summary of, of what this page is about. Because CISS programs at LCCC, um, you know, what, what does that mean? You know, if you're not familiar with those abbreviations, that might be confusing. You know? is at um, Lorain County Community College or some other community college that has the initials LCCC. So I'm going to go in, I'm going to say, yeah, maybe I want some additional content there. So I'm going to put in a paragraph that says, this site describes the different computer information systems at Lorain County Community College. LCCC 
LCCC offers associate degrees, certificates, and has partnerships with several, I don't know what the right word would be, several universities. So that gives a better sense. Remember, you don't want people guessing what your page is about. And therefore, maybe putting this in the header so that it appears on every single page would be effective. I can make this a link to Lorain County Community College. If I want, I can view this again, and this is what it looks like now. All right. So I want to be sure that um, I have the common content correct before I start cloning this page, right? Now that I have my first pass at what I want the common content is, I'm going to work on styling it, all right? Now here is where a lot of the things with web design come in, the fonts, the colors, all these kinds of things. So what we're going to do is we're going to do some simple things and then we'll, over the next few classes, do some more involved things to style it. So what my goal is is to make it look like this. So we're, our first aim is to make it look like that. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to create a style sheet. And I'm going to say body, background, what background do I want? Well, let's go for a nice dark shade of blue. All right. So let's look for HTML colors. And we can look and we can say maybe that's too light of a blue. Make it a little darker. A little darker. Yeah, I kind of like that. What we could actually do is this. This is kind of slick. We could pull up Elsie's page. Save their logo. Open it up in some image processor, like probably Paint 3D will work. And I can use the little eye drop thing to click and get the color. And the color for that is 0055A5. So that way I don't have to use my, depend on my eyesight to match the colors. I can go and um, match the colors exactly. So. How did you get that to show up in Paint 3D? How I got to show the image up in Paint 3D? Uh, how you got to show the color, the custom color that you have. I, I clicked the little uh, eyedropper. Right. And I clicked on this. Right. You got those two. How did you actually show what it was? You got I, I clicked on that. Click on the color. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So.
I can go and uh, put that as a background color. I can also go and select fonts. Now, if I know the specific fonts I, I want to, I can use it. Otherwise, I can say HTML font combinations. And here's 10 useful fonts for your next site. a common one. Let's go with, if we look at these, you can almost guess what's probably good and probably what bad. Comic Sans is probably not a good choice. It is, but we can't always use the best one, right? Otherwise, it would get boring. All right. We can go in and we can make different things. Uh, fonts, there are a few different families of fonts. Um, one is serif versus sans serif. Serif fonts have the little thingies on the end of the letter. So this might be a letter T in a serif font. These things here are called serifs. This would be an example of a letter T in a sans serif font. There's also fonts that are called like um, decorative or whatever, and that would be like Comic Sans, which is meant to be like you know any of the fonts that you see that look like handwriting or um, are not look like something other than a computer would produce, even though a computer is producing it. Uh, those would be sort of decorative fonts. There's also uh, variable space and monospace fonts. Uh, variable sp space uh, fonts, each letter takes up a different width. So a T would take more than an I in a variable length font. In a monospace font, the T and the I would take the same width. All right. I'm just going to grab one of these. And we can play with that. Why do we specify more than one font? Exactly. Fallback's a great word in, in, in that answer. Some fonts, uh, some machines don't have a particular font installed. So therefore, you want a similar font as a fallback. And the way it works is if I specify these fonts, the computer will first try to find this font. If it can't find it, it will go to the next font, and the next font, and the next font, and the next font. Usually, people specify two or three fonts, uh, a sequence of what you could go through. The last font is usually serif or sans serif, which is the browser's default serif or sans serif uh, font. So we'll just do this. Again, all the things that we said about visual language applies here. That is, we would want to um, make the page, um, make the tone of the page sort of match the appearance of the page, or make the appearance match the tone. So this is something that's somewhat serious. So we would use um, a nice professional font as opposed to a Comic Sans or, or something like that. Um, we might use serif fonts uh, for headings and sans serif fonts for smaller text. That's a good sort of guideline. If you look at the Wall Street Journal site, that's what they do. And a lot of sites do that where they have um, um, serif fonts for uh, headlines and sans serif uh, fonts for the actual paragraphs. We can play with this, though. Now, here's a nice thing <coughs> about this. Oh, 
okay, they made a liar out of me. They use sans serif, or they use, they use serif for both of them. Down here, there's an example of, of doing that with that ad. Serif fonts for the heading, sans serif for the content. And, but these use sans serif, or use serif in both places. Here's a good thing, though. With the CSS part of it, remember, we're isolating all our code in one place. So therefore, if we decide that we don't like it, if we, if we have a better choice of fonts later on, um, if our marketing director says, you know, we've been using a standard of such and such font, the CSS code, we're less concerned about getting right the first pass through, right? Because we can always go back and change it, and a change is only in one place. All right, I'm going to make this, I'm going to make the main sections of the page be, have a certain width, and I'm going to do that width based on percentages. So I'm going to say header width 60%. Then I'm going to specify a minimum width. What a minimum width is, is when you make the screen very small, it won't make it any smaller than this. So I'll make it no smaller than 300 pixels. And I'm going to make the margin 0 px on top, auto on the right and left. We've gone over examples like this before, um, if I recall correctly. I'm also going to make the background of the header white. And I'll make the color of the text LCCC blue. See how it goes. I'll make the same thing for the yellow, and I'll put a border around it. No, I don't. And I'll put a border around it. I'll do the same thing for the section, the nav, and the footer. I could just as easily have separated these by commas, but I tend to like want to give these their own in case I want to change something about one of them. So I save this as my CSS file. I'm going to call this main.css. Remember, I then have to go and put my link to the style sheet in my HTML page. And now we go and look at this, and I forgot to save stuff. It, you're right. It is main .c. Well, that's fine, but it, something should work. <laughs> Yeah, so we can troubleshoot it if there's a problem, but nothing was working. There we go. All right, and you're right. I have two navs instead of order, uh, or uh, two navs instead of um, whatever you said, footer. All right. 
Now, uh, the one thing I would say about this is if we look at this, it's kind of sloppy how this goes right up to the end. What is the attribute that controls the space from the border to where the text starts? Does anyone know? Is that, well, not really margin. Margin is the space between stuff. So the margin of this box is this space here. The border is this space here. This is called padding. So I'm going to go and I'm going to say padding on each of these of five pixels. And I'll go and do that. That's about how big it is. It, it's, it's not that much, but at least it's not run right together in here. Now, I can, I can critique this on other levels as well. Um, I probably want this navigation to be oriented horizontally. Maybe when I look at this G, it would be nice to put the image up here. So let's go and put the logo up here. Notice at this point, I'm only changing the one copy of it. I'm making sure I have this copy be exactly the way I want it to be before I start cloning it, right? The CSS that's less critical with, because with the CSS, everything's going to be in one file anyhow for all my pages. But for the HTML, each one's going to have its own HTML page. So I better make sure that my common content is right before I start cloning this guy. So I'm going to go up here and make in my template. image src equals lccc logo.png all equals lccc logo That means that I have something wrong with the image. LCCC logo.png. What did I put? Oh, that should be a dash. Yeah. It's also a good idea to match case, although many web servers don't care about that. All right, there we go. Not bad. Now, really, now my focus, before I start cloning this, ought to be, is my common content the way I want it to be? What's the common content? This, this, and this. Because I want to be pretty sure that content is set, because once I start cloning this, I'm going to have to make the change in a bunch of different places. OK? CSS I don't care about, you know? How do I feel about the blue font? I don't know. Looks OK, but I can postpone that decision is the bottom line. I could show this to people and say, hey, you know, do you like the blue font or you want to change it to black? All right? In which case, um, I don't have to change it in every place because it's, uh, that code is in the, the separate CSS file. Yes? Yes, text-align. All right, so for example, if I wanted this to be centered, what I could say is header h1 text-align center. All right. Let's review the style rule again. Header H1 means any H1s within the header section. What do I want to do with it? I want to make the text align center. Um, 
It's amazing all the things you can change with CSS. We, by the end of the class, we'll go over a lot of them, but we still will not have covered everything that you can do with CSS. So it's important to get good at looking things up. What will typically happen like this is, you know, it's like it used to be in the old days with, with phone numbers, right? With phone numbers, you remembered a couple of phone numbers that you called all the time and, and everything else you looked up. With CSS, you may remember the things that you do all the time, but other things you might have to look up. Gradually, over time, you're going to learn more and more of the things, so you have to look up less. But B, if there's something you want to do, almost make the assumption that there's probably a way in CSS to do it. And then just look for the attributes uh, that exist that would allow you to do that. So in this case, there we go. And it's centered. All right? A couple things to notice. First of all, I wouldn't hold this up as an example of great web design. But yet, it's not horrible. I mean, it's professional looking. Um, the colors are OK. The colors are appropriate in that LC's color is blue, and the, the, the color is blue, yes? I like the, the, the menu, right? Right. Exactly. Right. Now, we may want to go and make these look a little better. Maybe we want to have them oriented horizontally because this takes up a little bit of space vertically, and there's sort of some wasted space here. So maybe we'll orient them horizontally. All right. This is where we'll pick up next week. I promise you no visitors next week. We had visitors Monday and Wednesday, which is very I, I, In fact, it was funny. I said how rare it is for me to have a visitor in the class, and we had two in one week. We will not have any next week uh, if, you know, uh, if I have anything to do with it, all right? Uh, but we'll pick up and we'll finish this prototype and we'll start making more. Yes? So you are an unordered list. Almost all of the navigations I do are unordered lists because that's what links are. Now you might say, I don't want it to look like that. I don't want the bullet points. I want it to be horizontal. That's fine, but remember, you put the HTML tags that are appropriate for the content. If you want it to look differently, you style it to look differently. Uh, one second, please. I think we still, still have a question I over here. I, I still have, like, instead of being put in, like, there's nothing on link now, so anything that's going to be, like, a, a link now, H1, H2, or by, like, slash two, slash right. slash, I can just put everything in just one section here. Yes. How am I putting the link, like, in the profile here? I'm not really following you. Maybe this would be a better one to, uh, yeah, let, let's cover this one in lab. Yeah. Right. David? Oh, um, the question I have regarding the, the font family. Mm -hmm. I know there are some of them that are kind of standard and some of them are right. terrible. Right. And I also know that there are ways to specifically change some of these elaborate fonts to make them look like the original. Right. Right. But is there any other sort of like reservoir out there in the system that would be allowed to change the font to put half of the collection of elaborate fonts without necessarily having them specifically copied and appended to the folder? In other words, I'm accessing some other external folder somewhere else in possession of those changes. Well, well, I mean, your choices are either it's a font that computers recognize, like standard fonts, or if it's a special font, you download the font. Now, where that place lives, I mean, you know, many companies create fonts, and you can buy them or, or use them or whatever. Uh, but if it's not one of the standard ones, then you would download the font. It would have to be something that's downloadable. Or embed the font, actually, is a better way to put it. 
All right. Um, next week we'll continue, and we'll actually make several versions of this prototype using several different layout techniques. All right. That's all I had. We'll see you in lab.